In question 5 of this series, we're asked, a delivery truck is traveling at 40 kilometers an hour. After the truck has a 35 kilometer head start, a car leaves from the same place traveling at 65 kilometers an hour to overtake the truck. We have to find out how long will take the car to overtake the truck and how far from the starting point will the car overtake the truck. I want you to start this question by visualizing what's happening. We have a truck that has left a starting point, a common starting point with the car, and it is traveling 40 kilometers an hour. So this is the pathway of the truck, and it will meet the car at some point D, and the truck has already traveled 35 kilometers. So if this is zero, we'll say that from here to here is 35 kilometers. So the truck is currently right here. The speed of the truck is 40 kilometers an hour, and I'll show that with a double arrow, 40 kilometers an hour. The car, on the other hand, is starting off where the truck started, and it hasn't moved anywhere, but we know that it will be traveling at a constant pace of 65 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to draw the car right here, and it will be traveling at 65 kilometers an hour. Now, if they're taking the same path, obviously at some point D in the future, this car will reach the truck. The formula that we'll use to model the car and the truck will be based off the formula for speed, which is shown right here, and that's distance over time. And since there are two unknowns, both distance and time is unknown, we'll need to create a minimum of two equations, one for the car and one for the truck. The car will have a formula that models the speed formula, where speed is equal to distance over time. The car is traveling 65 kilometers an hour, and there's no need to write down the units is equal to the distance d, which we don't know, over time, which we also don't know. Furthermore, we can also model a formula for the truck, where we have a speed of 40 kilometers an hour, and the distance remaining to get to d, the distance from here to here, will be represented as d minus 35. And I'll explain that in a second. d minus 35. That's the key to answering this question correctly, because a lot of students will make the error of adding 35 to d over t. Now the reason why it's d minus 35 is because this distance represents the amount remaining. This is 35, and this is something we don't know, what's highlighted. So let's call this region some arbitrary value a. So 35 plus a is equal to d. If I isolate for a, I have to bring this 35 over, where I end up with a is equal to d minus 35. And that's where that comes from. We now have two equations with two unknowns where we have to solve for d and t. Everyone has their own strategy to solving for these variables. You can start by solving for d, and then using that d, you can substitute it back into one of the equations to find t. Or you can do the opposite, where you solve for t and then find d. What I will do is isolate for d in both of these equations and set d's equal to each other. Let me show you what I mean. So if I want to isolate for d in this equation, I'll multiply both sides by t. And look what happens on the right side. This goes away, where I get 65t is equal to d. And to isolate for d here, I'll multiply both sides by t. Once again, this t and this t cancel out, leaving us with 40t is equal to d minus 35. I said originally that I wanted to solve for d, so all I have to do is bring this minus 35 over, where I get 40t plus 35. Notice that this 35 was negative, and it became plus 35 when I moved it over, and that's equal to d. My strategy at the beginning was to solve d in both of these equations and set them equal to each other. And I'll do that next. I'll take the content of d in this equation, 65t, and the content of d in this equation and make them equal to one another. Now I'm left with a linear equation with one unknown. I can collect like terms and then find my unknown. Bring that 40t over, that makes it 65t minus 40t is equal to 35. This becomes 
25t. I just combine these two like terms. And now, to isolate for this t, I'll divide both sides by 25, giving me t is equal to, using my calculator, 35 divided by 25. The fraction is 7 over 5, although we rarely represent time as fractions, so 1.4 will suffice. 1.4 hours. The car and the truck will meet each other at this point D within 1.4 hours. The next step is to solve for my distance. To do that, I'll take my time t of 1.4 and substitute it into this equation. I can also substitute it into this equation, the original one. It's up to you. Usually you choose the equation that is simpler. 65 times 1.4 is equal to d. Using my calculator, 65 times 1.4 gives me 91. 91 kilometers where these two will meet. To summarize what just happened here, this car, if it starts at the beginning and travels 65 kilometers an hour, meanwhile the truck continues at a pace of 40 kilometers an hour but has a 35 kilometer head start, they will meet 91 kilometers away from the starting point and that will take 1.4 hours. So there you have it. That is how to solve word problems with two unknowns.